I haven't made any videos in a while and I decided to make a short video on economics uh, specifically about price and cost of production um, I just find uh, this this particular insight that I want to share um, from Rothbard and obviously he derived it from works of other Austrian economists uh, I find that particular insight uh, very interesting and fascinating and amusing um, the uh, popular notion of the relationship between cost of production and price is like this uh, marginal cost of production determines the lowest market price or something like this don't don't hold me to this but you know what I'm talking about well you know they can't sell anything you know the, the producer has produced at the cost of five cents a piece uh, and now they have to sell the widgets or whatever it is that they're selling at, at, at least five because uh, you know if they don't they will lose money or something, something to that effect but the thing is cost of production actually do not determine prices but the interesting thing is that the relationship is the other way around it's the market prices that determine cost of production and the way it works is like this um, market prices are are determined by supply and demand uh, something is demanded in the marketplace meaning there are people who are willing to trade for a certain product pr trade say money um, and uh, the product is offered it's supplied in the market and then the buyer and the seller meet and they agree on a price that is a satisfactory to both parties and then they make the exchange um, so we can see right away that the subjective valuations of consumers must play a huge role in in the pricing of goods and services purchased in the market what about the notion of oh it's 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 like two blades of the scissors and one blade is subjective valuations of consumers but the other blade is the given supply well the supply is not really given I mean the supply has been produced um, it's not given as in given in nature like you know um, minerals are in, in 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 the earth or oil or whatever even oil is yeah it's given but first you have to figure out that it's a resource that you can use and then you have to dig it out of the ground pump it out of the ground and and refine it whatnot so just because something's there it's not really given uh, unless you can just you know walk around and, and picks this stuff up uh, off of uh, the floor but even then you have to spend time and energy picking it off of the floor so you know nothing's really given it doesn't just materialize in your hands uh, but back to how prices actually drive and determine the cost of production say for example you are in the business of selling candy uh, and the uh, the demand for candy suddenly surges so more people desire candy right so you are gonna want to supply more candy to the market because it's an opportunity to make money right well um, you your candy making machine is only capable of producing so many pounds of candy per day but the demand is much greater what do you do well you have to buy another candy making machine say for example you're not the only uh, uh, purveyor of candy in the market other people see the same opportunity want to exploit it and they go to wherever people buy candy making machines and start doing what they start bidding up prices uh, candy making machines are actually going to go up in price also if say for example operating those candy making machines is a very specific type of labor uh, so candy machine operators suddenly become more pricey in the marketplace Think back to the uh, you know late 90s, early 2000s, uh, in the the high tech bubble, where the cost of labor, particular labor, uh, you know, IT personnel, programmers, software developers, systems engineers, and people uh, like that, they all went up in price. Their salaries, you know, in many cases went up substantially. Why? Because they those prices were bid up in the market. Uh, the demand for them rose, and that. Uh, uh, it, the way you know supply and demand interact is one supply is greater than demand or, or grows faster than demand the price will have to go up for the markets to clear so in our candy example we have just successfully bid up the prices of candy making machines and candy making machine operators thereby increasing cost of production now uh, if at the same time um, s since the demand has grown so much but the say, say supply is lagging a little bit behind people start doing what 
candy lovers start doing what? They start bidding up the price of candy as well. So you see, you know, increased demand for candy. And that, in fact, uh, happens first. The increased demand for candy leads to prices being bid up before the supply can respond and produce more candy. But that, you know, in turn, what happens to the cost of production? The cost of production go up. See how that works? <laughs> the only way the price in the marketplace can go up is either by you know a, a sharp drop in supply or a drop in supply or by a surge in demand or both right uh, if this disparity between uh, supply and demand is is skewed towards you know de demand over supply I don't know if I'm using the right terms but you know what I'm saying then the price is going to go up the price going up will actually result in candy makers bidding up the, the you know prices the factor prices for whatever goes into the production of candies and the cost of production of candy will go up as well my explanation is not perfect but it, it makes perfect sense to me i don't know I'm, I'm i'm not very good at explaining things maybe but uh isn't it interesting i always thought that well you know obviously cost of production determine market prices no the reason why uh market prices very closely approximate the marginal cost of production is because marginal producers whose productivity only allows them to make very very thin profit margins because they haven't figured out how to produce that particular good uh, more economically economizing on the factors all, all the inputs land labor and capital that they use to produce a particular good people who produce over uh, at the at the marginal cost over the market price are driven out of the market they're just not around after a while they lose money and they sh they, they close down shop and they you know they go into a different line of business so that is why the marginal producer that remains in business, their marginal cost of production is very close to the market price. But it's not that the cost determine the price, but it's actually the price that determines the cost the other way around. I just think it's a, it's a very elegant and a, a very amusing and interesting insight.